Hello, my name is Felipe. I'll show you what Mural is, how to shift from being a beginner to a fantastic facilitator. I'll show you some of my example boards and I'll dive into a couple of common questions that I often get asked. Let's go. You can have five canvases for free with an unlimited number of collaborators. They don't need to have accounts in order to collaborate with you. And if you're listening, Mural, I'm doing this because I love using Mural to collaborate. So what is it? It's a digital whiteboard space at a minimum. You can use it for meetings and workshops, which I often do. You can get as fancy as your imagination allows you to. I'll start by signing into my account. When you sign into Mural, you'll land here in your workspace. You can belong to multiple workspaces, as you see here. You can click down on this menu and see the multiple workspaces you belong to. You can also invite people, but on the free account, you're limited to just one person to be collaborating in your workspace as an equal editor. I'm just going to click on this example, Welcome to Mural, to get started to show some of the key features. So right away, you'll notice that it came in pretty zoomed in. Mural will open your canvases by default at the last zoom that you had. And this particular Welcome to Mural board, which I can change the name by clicking here and editing the text to just welcome, hitting enter, I've now titled this. By default, mural boards are untitled, and this is just to encourage you to give them a proper title. When I click on this title of the board, I've got some options here. I can add it to my favorites. I can choose to export it when I'm done as an image or a PDF. It'll come back to me as an email from mural using the account that I registered. Then I can share that image or PDF with my fellow collaborators as a record of what we did. Well, let's go ahead and click on this outline introduction. And you can see that it quickly shifts me in. You can also get in touch with me at thefelipe.bio.link for more videos like this and inspiration. And every time you do, just imagine I'm raining down confetti. Thank you for staying in touch. Down here at the bottom, you'll notice as a facilitator and all owners of boards by default are facilitators, it comes with some responsibility. Facilitator superpowers. You can have people that are collaborating with you follow you. You can use this reactions and you can celebrate dropping confetti. Don't worry, I fully loaded the confetti bombers today. And you can broadcast your cursor so that people can see where you are at any given time. If you like what I'm doing, go ahead and give this video a like. <laughs> if you love what I'm doing, go ahead and put some hearts in the comments so that I know that you like this. Okay, let's uh, just test to make sure this confetti is still working. Ah, yes, it is. Okay. These are sticky notes. I can delete them and bring them back using the undo feature or the redo feature, or I can also just click Control Z on my keyboard or Command Z on a Mac to bring them back as well. If I wanted to make more post notes or change the color, I simply click on the post note and I get this menu of options. Let's first look at the standard colors. These are all the standard colors here, and you can also go transparent grayscale. So you can see there the transparency feature, sometimes helpful. And then you can also create more sticky notes by using the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a keyboard, on a Mac keyboard, and you'll see that the cursor changes to two cursors. I click and drag, and now I can do the same for all of my sticky notes as I need to. I can even click and drag to navigate around the mural, or I can hold the space bar, which changes my cursor to a hand, and I can click and drag without worry of moving my sticky notes that I just so carefully placed. If I let go of that and I forget and I click and drag, it moves the sticky note as if I was trying to navigate. Don't worry, just hit Control Z, hold the shift, hold the space key down and move around. You can also click on this hand here to shift out of move mode from edit mode. And now I can click around. When I hold the space bar now, when I'm in move mode, it doesn't do anything. I have to click back on to get back into editing mode. And now I'm just clicking and dragging, or I can just click on white space of the canvas and drag around. Let me zoom back one more time. Just so you can see this mural board's got some, some space on it. If I wanted to change the main properties of the mural, I'd just right click on the canvas itself and get into edit mural settings. Here I can rename the board back to welcome to mural. 
I can change the background color to one of four options, and I can resize the board and get very specific on my pixels. There's also some themes. We can switch to animals or music, and we also have sound effects for the timers. Let's take a listen. All right, buckle up. It's time to get collaborative. Okay, so let's go back into this option here for the outline. And I can close this outline to get out of my way and get some more space here. And you notice you also have a title here. In order to get a title like this, I simply will click here on the left and I've got the option to create another title. By default, it'll put it towards the center of my view and then I can rename it as I need to. This is a title mural. It's just for educational purposes. You also have the ability to enter in text boxes and you can copy and paste from your favorite editor or text anywhere online and paste into Mural as well. On your titles, you have some options here for colors as well. So I can put this background color to baby blue. And if I drag these corners, I can quickly resize my title and I can center the text by just clicking on this text format button and then clicking on center to align the text to center. Very nice. You can also switch any one of these features to another feature. 3x5 post-it note or a round post-it note. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see it. Or the default 3x3 post-it note. Once I have one and I want to make another, the easiest way to make a post-it note is to just double click anywhere on the white space. And Mural remembers the last post-it note that I used so I can make another one. Hello Mural. If you want to get down to the next line, just hit the enter key on your keyboard to start on a new line. This is a new line. And if I wanted to get below this line, I just hit enter again, and I can start typing. When I'm done typing, all I have to do is click off of my sticky note, and now I can move my tag around wherever I like. And I still have all the options as before. You can also create hyperlinks as well. So you can just click here, enter the hyperlink, and hit enter. So Mural has a couple other features. You can move things around onto this frame. This is the outline frame. I can make sure my hello, this is mural stays in my outline. And I can grab this entire frame and move it around. And since this note is now an orphan, I can just click it and delete it. So I can bring back my outline view by clicking on the outline icon at the top right. And after I've introduced my team to what mural is, and shown them a couple of sticky notes, now we can go into some brainstorming. You might ask them like, how might we collaborate better digitally? Well, we can use Mural. Let's use the built-in timer and set it to one minute and start to brainstorm with our team. We can allow our team to enter in sticky notes as well as use icons from the vast icon library. I am a fan of this fire icon, especially when you turn it to red. It does just convey a certain message of urgency for brainstorming. And I'm just holding the Option key on my Mac. You can hold the Alt key on your PC, and you can add more fire to your heart's desire. But you can also cool it and add a fire extinguisher if necessary. They have so many icons. So I'll just bring a fire extinguisher and just make sure that, uh, that we keep it too safe, and we don't let this collaboration get out of control. <laughs> all right remember always use the confetti to reinforce the things that you love with your team and uh be sure if you haven't already done so hit that uh, like button ah perfect timing okay so now your team has collaborated they've used some icons they've used some text what else can you do in mural you can also prioritize by moving things in order and showing precedence. This is a YouTube video copied and pasted right into Mural. You can double click the video and play it right in, or you can open it on a new tab. You can also open anything that you paste in. When you hover over, Mural will give you an open feature here, or I could just delete it. So there are absolutely some use cases, templates, and frameworks, as you can see here. Let's go ahead and open up another example so we can see how you might use this for presentations. So if I'll start zoom back, you can see that I've got quite a few elements here and I'm using the outline in order to create them. So I will just navigate by clicking on the outline, starting here in my presentation, 
making my three points and then jumping to the next section of my outline. As you can see, Mural just automatically moves to whichever order I click on next. I just shifted the yellow and the red back so I can go green, yellow, red, or I can start back in my question after each point. The choice is up to you. Let's look at one of the other types of features that Mural has. You can use what are called templates, which are entire canvases ready for you. You can do retrospectives and there are little pop-up windows to tell you what they look like. You can also click on the down arrow to just straight away create if that's something that you like. You can create brainstorming sessions. You can go to the community and look at other templates. And you can look at ideation templates or project planning. When you first come into Mural, your template will be ready. I'm holding the, the space bar key to click and navigate around. The templates will always give you some directions before the session, which once you're familiar with and you're running, you can delete or you can save for your participants. And then you can also add in some key players. You can drag and drop photographs as well. You can set the directions for how this template's going to go. So you can do this with your entire team. This particular template recommends two to four hours. This is gonna be a nice, healthy half day session. Make sure to take a break every hour so that people get a chance to refresh. And you can share the agenda so people know exactly what to expect. Here's an example of a traditional schedule here a bar chart or Gantt chart schedule. And I'll show two different pull planning frameworks so we can deconstruct this into a more collaborative way. We'll start by creating some assignments of different people color coded. Then we'll use murals sticky note feature to create some milestones in time. This is so happens to go out for three years 2022. We can also drop in some PDF resources for our team members so they can have things right handy when they need to. And we can create a legend of all the people we named and the responsibilities above color coded. So we see their activities here to the side. We can schedule using images. We can schedule using frames like I showed you before. And you can toggle, you can toggle the frame titles on and off by clicking on the toggle title button. Say that three times fast, toggle title, toggle title, toggle title button. And then we can always bring back the outline view. Let's say I want to go to week X. And I want to change the name of this frame. I can change it here in the outline view to week one Hit enter. And you can see that the update happens here automatically and vice versa. I can click here and type week X hit enter and the outline is updated automatically. You can also create a view for scrum or Kanban using your sticky notes and taking that same collaboration scheduling that you did. And just showing it a different view. If you want to add dividers like this, all you need to do is click on the shapes and connectors, pull out a divider, resize it to how you like to your favorite color. I'll pick blue and we'll just make it a little bit thicker and we'll dash out a little bit. Some of the common questions that people ask me are, how do you create dividers in mural? You have a couple different options to do that. You can use a title and just change the color background here. This is just a title bar and I've just changed the background. If I change this background to black, I lose the text, but no worry. I can change the font color to white and now I can see this divider. I can also use line dividers as I have here, which again is just coming back over to shapes and connectors and choosing your line dividers and then place them on the screen as you need to. So here I have five frames. So I've made five sections and it's very obvious that they're separated by these lines. I can click on one and I can choose to create an outline in dark black instead of gray or any one of the custom colors that I like, as well as changing the thickness of the outline. That's one way to create dividers. And you can also move this. Let's say you're working in mural and you want to add a framework so you can have the, all this text move together. All you need to do is click on frameworks on the left, click on title to add the title. We can double click here and name it. What are we missing? We could just name it missing. I can hit enter or I can click away. Then I can drag the corners to change the size. And once I do that, I can hold shift to select multiple items by dragging across them. And now I have all of those items on the frame. I can toggle the frame title 
by just clicking the toggle frame title. And I can also add this to my outline by right clicking it and clicking add to outline. And by default, it's going to be all the way at the bottom, which we've titled missing. Do people that I invite to my murals need to have an account? And the answer is it depends. It doesn't have to be. If you click on the share at the top of any mural canvas that you'd like to share, you have some options here. If you choose to invite people by email address, they'll receive an email and the option to sign in or create an account. The easiest thing to do is to click on the next tab, which opens up this visitor link dialog box. Here, you can just click copy the link and then share this via email or your favorite messaging application. And if you make a change to view only afterwards, then when they come in, they'll only be able to view, but we want to collaborate. So let's leave it on edit. And then once we hit done, it'll close this dialog box. In the future, if you want to revoke access, you can just click reset link or add a password so that people can only enter your murals with a password that you provide them. You can also export a mural as a PDF or an image, a PNG, or you can include all the links and images and text as a zip file so that they have everything. And you can also embed the mural if you en enable embedding into a website if you like. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and feel a little more confident. Go out there and open a mural and start trying things out and navigating. Let me know in the comments what you like most about this video. Thank you. Make sure you fill up those confetti poppers before you get started. And if you run out of confetti as a facilitator, all of your participants always have the ability to confetti pop on you. So go ahead and like that video, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching.